On this week's show, we catch up with Michelle and Lori from Two Gals and a Dog in Tucson, Arizona, as they find out that, yes, you can freeze your RV hot water heater in Arizona. Another newbie lesson. Also on this week's show, Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 show us some great trailer backing tips. Then later, we join Yvonne in her RV kitchen as she shows us how to make a quick and delicious cheater buffalo chicken sandwich. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Rolling On TV is brought to you by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. Recently, a couple of our team members, Michelle and Lori from Two Gals and a Dog, made a costly mistake in not realizing how cold it can get in Arizona. The result? Well, let's catch up with them at La Mesa RV Center in Tucson, Arizona, and let them tell you the story. Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Lori from Two Gals and a Dog. And we are here at La Mesa RV in Tucson, Arizona, because we need a new water heater for our RV because we froze it. Now, we are from Massachusetts where everything freezes. And we moved here to Prescott Valley, Arizona and didn't even give it a thought. We're brand new RV newbies. Didn't even give it a thought to let that water out of our water heater and it froze. So fortunately, we work with Rolling On TV and Truma is giving us a, an AquaGo instant hot water system and we're really excited about that. And we promise we won't freeze it. We are really excited about getting this Truma AquaGo system. And Billy DiDonato is going to be teaching us all about it. Good morning, ladies. Hi, Billy. I'm Billy with Truma. Nice, nice to, to see you guys. You. Uh, congratulations on your new Truma AquaGo Comfort. Uh, I promise with this unit, you are not going to run into any uh, freeze damage like you did with your uh, <laughs> original existing water heater, fortunately. Uh, with the AquaGo Comfort that we're going to provide you, you're going to get an indoor switch that we're going to mount within the coach. This is going to allow you to toggle between different modes such as Eco Mode. If the temperature of the AquaGo is sensed to be below 41 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to kick on for a couple seconds to keep it from freezing. So in that case, you're not going to have to worry about the unit freezing up when you're not using it, right? A little nice little insurance policy for you. <laughs> Very nice. Exactly. <laughs> Another nice little feature that the uh, Truma AquaGo Comfort allows is clean mode. Uh, anytime you heat water, unfortunately those impurities begin to harden up and uh, you need a way to clean that out. Uh, with the Truma AquaGo Comfort control panel, it's actually going to tell you when it's time to clean the system out and you'd use a packet of our Truma decalcification tablets to do so. So that's going to drastically expend, uh, extend the lifespan of your aqua right? And we'll Wonderful. get into a little bit more on how the decalcification procedure works later in the show. While Billy and the gals are discussing the new AquaGo, Tom Kresge from La Mesa RV Center disconnects and removes the old hot water heater from the trailer. With the old unit out, Tom hooks up all the wires and water lines to the new heater prior to installation. Next, the AquaGo is slid into the opening all the necessary connections are completed. As you can see, it's a relatively simple installation as the AquaGo is designed to fit perfectly in most standard RV hot water heater openings. Coming up after the break, Billy DiNonato explains to the gals the operating procedures of the new AquaGo Comfort model water heater. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Exploration. It affirms that we are alive, demands that we are present. So let's put our work lives on pause 
ramble out into the world and share the journey with the ones we love. For more information, visit LanceCamper.com. Welcome back. And now, let's join Michelle and Lori as they learn more about their new AquaGo comfort system. All right, Michelle, well, now that your AquaGo has been installed, mm -hmm. uh, I want to go over the different modes that are available on the control panel so that we make sure that you get the best uh, performance out of the AquaGo as possible. Okay. First thing to, no uh, to note is the AquaGo, the on-off switch, will need to be turned on at the AquaGo first before you move your control panel out of the off position. Okay. okay? The first mode that we're going to talk about is Eco Mode. Uh, now, Eco Mode is going to make sure that the AquaGo is protected from any sort of freezing conditions. If it sees temperatures below 41 degrees Fahrenheit within itself, it's going to kick on for a couple of seconds to make sure it doesn't freeze up. Okay, so when you're not using it in cold temperatures, it does allow itself to be pr protected. Now, please be aware that it is protecting itself only. It is mm -hmm. not going to protect the plumbing system within your RV. Okay? <laughs> okay, so it's not a replacement for winterization. All right. Okay, the next mode down is comfort mode. Now, comfort mode is going to essentially do the same thing, except instead of a 41 degree Fahrenheit set point, it's going to be 102. So it's constantly going to be maintaining a temperature of 102 degrees within your plumbing within your AquaGo at all times. Okay. okay. The next mode is off, which is standby mode. So obviously, when you have the AquaGo in the off position, uh, it's not really going to be much more than uh, something nice to look at at the uh, outside of your RV. Okay. It's not going to be doing anything. The next mode down is electric antifreeze. Okay. Now, electric antifreeze is used uh, with our aftermarket Truma electric antifreeze kit. Okay. Now, what the electric antifreeze kit allows you to do is maintain uh, an AquaGo, keeping it from freezing using 12 volts DC instead of propane. Okay. You mm -hmm. would use that for, you know, say you're going to go on a long trip and you don't want to drain your AquaGo, but you do want to ensure that it's not uh, freezing up, and we can't obviously use propane while we're driving around. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, something to note about that is if you do not have the aftermarket electric antifreeze kit, uh, the AquaGo is not going to do anything. It's not going to protect you. Okay. Mm -hmm. The last mode down is uh, one of the most important ones. It's called clean mode. Okay. It's kind of what we alluded to earlier. Anytime you heat water, those impurities are going to begin to harden. They're going to scale up and you're going to need to clean them. Okay. This panel will flash once every seven seconds after 1,585 gallons of hot water pass through the AquaGo. And that's okay. indicating that it's time to do a decalcification procedure. Mm -hmm. In this case, you would use a packet of decalcification tablets, okay? put them into the system, and run it through clean mode, and it's going to circulate the uh, tablets through the system for about two hours, and then let you know when it's time to flush out all of your uh, water lines through all How the How do you process. put it in the system? Uh, you're going to put it into the filter, and reintroduce water to the system, and put it to clean mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, an important thing to note about the uh, clean mode is for a safety feature, if you put the control panel into clean mode, you have 30 seconds to take it out of clean mode unless uh, you want the entire procedure to take place. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't uh, take it out of clean mode after 30 seconds, it wants to see the entire system rinsed out uh, in accordance with the manual. Okay. okay? Right. Now, another last thing I want to just touch on is now that you've got your wonderful AquaGo, you want to make sure that it is protected. Mm -hmm. So with every manual, you're going to get a warranty registration card. Make sure you fill this out and send it into a, uh, our office, or you can do it online at truma.net. And what we're going to do there is extend our 12-month parts and labor warranty that comes with the AquaGo to 24 months parts and labor. All right, Michelle, next we're going to go over how to winterize your AquaGo so that we can protect it in cold temperatures when it's not in use. Mm -hmm. uh, we made it real easy for you to drain our system using our easy drain lever. All you're going to want to do is shut off your incoming cold or your uh, onboard pump and then relieve pressure. You're going to want to do it at your highest points at your fixtures. We don't want you to relieve the pressure at our pressure relief valve there, okay? Okay. Once you have relieved the pressure, you're going to come down to the easy drain lever, pull it down, 
and pull out this filter. You're gonna see the water spit away from mm -hmm. your uh, your RV. So you're not gonna get any water stains on your nice paint job or anything like that. It's gonna spit away from your uh, AquaGo, okay? Okay. It's gonna spit out a inlet filter, which is gonna keep any sort of that junk and debris that unfortunately is in our water supplies from getting into the AquaGo, okay? okay. The two O-rings on this filter seal the water system, okay? So if you forget to relieve the pressure before you pull down on that easy drain lever, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna Get relieve wet. that pressure <laughs> okay. exactly all over all yourself, right. okay? All right. For that same reason, what we recommend for uh, winterization procedures is to leave the filter out for the entire season, okay? So that we have an open system. Mm -hmm. So all you're gonna do for the season is just plug that easy drain lever back up and put the filter in a, a place where you're gonna remember where to uh, get it when it's time to reintroduce mm -hmm. water back into the aquago, okay? Now this filter is also gonna act as the uh, container to hold our decalcification tablets in clean uh, mode, okay? okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take all six of these tablets and stack them in one by one in into here? the filter. Yes, ma'am. All right. We made them so that they fit perfectly. Okay. And then you're gonna put water back into the system. Or the, I'm sorry, the filter back into the easy drain lever. Yep. You're gonna reintroduce water into the system. Give it about 10 minutes, mm -hmm. okay? So that allows those decalcification tablets to dissolve a bit, okay? After about 10 minutes, uh, it's a good idea to bleed the air out of your water lines at that same faucet that we would have relieved pressure to drain the system, okay? Mm -hmm. These tablets come with little, do little hang tags that you can put onto the faucets to make sure that anyone who goes inside your RV knows that we have a cleaning procedure going on, okay? okay? Once you've got water back into that system, just go back to our switch inside and turn it to clean mode. And it'll ah. circulate for about two hours and it'll flash on this control panel like a heartbeat, okay? Okay. Once this control panel starts flashing rapidly, that's how we know that this it's This whole thing? This yes. whole thing flashes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's how we will know that it's time to flush the system out. So we're going to open up all of our faucets. Once mm -hmm. approximately eight gallons of water have passed through the AquaGo, this light is going to go out, and you're going to get an, a red flashlight here. It's going to flash a red light, indicating that we are now good to reset the unit. So you're going to turn the switch to the off position, and you're gonna turn the AquaGo to the off position, give it a couple seconds, and reintroduce power to both the AquaGo and then the switch, and then you'll be good to go. So you always turn this on first before you turn that on? Yes, ma'am, yes. Okay. And if you ever have any questions, uh, our manual spells out the uh, decalcification and clean procedure very thoroughly. Uh, you can always call us at our office at 855-558-7862. Uh, we have an extensive dealer network across North America. And um, we also just opened a uh, sales and service center in lovely Lakeland, Florida. So if, it, if you ever have your RV around there and you need a uh, uh, maintenance done on your AquaGo, mm -hmm. feel free to stop in. So routinely, do we turn this off when we're not using the RV? You certainly can, uh, but just remember if this aqua go is in the off position, mm -hmm. uh, you lose that freeze protection. Okay? Oh, okay. So it's always right. best uh, to just leave that switch in the on position okay. and do all your controlling at the control panel. If you're Good. not going to be using it, put it to off. Okay. okay? All right. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, enjoy your uh, aqua Thank go. You, Billy. I think you're really going to enjoy <laughs> these nice hot showers. Yes. Okay. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at jayco.com or just log on to rollingontv.com. Simply put, Thetford's AquaCam has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaCam, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com.
Thetford.com. Aquacam, another great product from Thetford. Eventually, the day will come when you need to back the trailer. Backing a trailer can be a little intimidating, and it requires practice. In this section, I want to offer a backing technique that always worked for me, but first, let's go over some trailer backing basics. Before you start any backing maneuver, get out and walk the area you will be backing into. Look at where you want the trailer to go and determine where you want the trailer wheels to go as you maneuver. Until you are proficient at backing a trailer, it's a good idea to mark the trailer's path you want it to follow using some traffic cones. Pivot point, which is basically the trailer wheels, is important when backing the trailer because this is the point in which the trailer turns during a backing maneuver. You want to use the pivot point as your guide. You not only want to have a full view of your spotter at all times, but you want to keep a line of sight from the mirror to the pivot point so you know when to turn. The most important and helpful asset when backing a trailer is a spotter. The spotter can watch what is happening behind you and in your blind spots and let you know what corrections need to be made. When you have a spotter, you both need to agree on a set of rules. What I mean by this is where will the spotter be located, how will you communicate with each other, and who is telling whom what to do. Rule number one is, when you use a spotter, whatever happens is the spotter's responsibility. They are your eyes and ears, and the driver should do exactly what the spotter tells them to do. Rule number two is, use only one spotter. If you use two spotters, I guarantee you they will both be telling you to do something different. You should develop hand signals that you both understand. How will you start, stop, turn left, turn right, and know when to pull forward. The backing technique I recommend is what I refer to as the assisted technique. This technique implies what it says. You have to have a spotter to assist you. The spotter needs to be in your view at all times. Never continue to back a trailer when you cannot see your spotter. The golden rule is for the driver to do exactly what the spotter tells you to. You may want to discuss who will drive and who will spot because with this technique the spotter is responsible for putting the trailer where you want it. After you establish hand signals you both understand and agree on and walk the area where you will be backing, you are ready to start the maneuver. Start by pulling up straight and as you stop, turn the wheels on the tow vehicle in the opposite direction you want the trailer to go. This will get the trailer heading in the right direction when you start the backing maneuver. In this method, the spotter stands in front of the tow vehicle in clear view of the driver and can slowly walk from right to left checking blind spots and watching for the back of the trailer to reach the cones. You need to stop occasionally and look behind the trailer. Small children and pets can wander behind the trailer without you seeing them. The reason this technique is so effective is because neither the spotter nor the driver has to think about doing the opposite when backing the trailer. The first step is for the driver to roll the windows down and turn the radio off. The driver leaves their hand on the top of the steering wheel like you're accustomed to, and because the spotter is in front of the vehicle, they simply tell the driver to turn the steering wheel in the direction they want the back of the trailer to go. So if the spotter wants the trailer to go to the right, they tell the driver to turn the steering wheel to the right. The driver slowly turns and backs in the direction the spotter tells them to. Nobody has to think about it. The driver just does what the spotter tells them to do. The key to driving is slowly turning and backing in the direction the spotter tells you to. The two biggest mistakes made are turning the steering wheel too much and holding it in the turn position too long. If either of these mistakes occur, the result is it will require greater correction to get straightened out, and if you continue to back while holding the wheel in that position too long, the tow vehicle and trailer can jackknife. It will require some practice. The spotter will have to learn that once the trailer is into the turn, it's time to go the opposite direction to bring the tow vehicle and trailer back in a straight line. Do not be concerned if you have to stop, pull forward, and start again. This will happen more than once during the early stages. Take your trailer to a large open area where you can practice, and I guarantee before you know it, you'll be backing like the pros. Need some new replacement rubber trim and seals for your RV? Now celebrating their 60th anniversary, Steel Rubber Products has been the leading choice for discerning hot rod and classic car owners for all their rubber parts needs. 
And now, Steel Rubber Products is offering the same high quality parts and service to RV owners everywhere. For more information on Steel Rubber Products and to get a free RV catalog, visit rv.steelrubber.com. When you have a Truma Aquago instant hot water system, you can expect to make a lot of new friends. Hello campers, RV Cooking Show Ivan here. Yep guys, we heard your plea for a couple of manly dishes and we're prepared to deliver. This week we're making something crunchy and spicy and gooey on the grill. Something I think you fellas and ladies alike are going to really enjoy. It's buffalo style pressed chicken sandwiches and they're super easy too. We're gonna use some rotisserie chicken, a little blue cheese dressing and hot sauce mixture, some pepper jack. We're gonna fire up the grill to create this surprisingly simple, but shh, don't tell, taste sensation. So let's do this thing. What we've got is we've got our hoagie roll or our sub roll, and I've sliced it. You can leave it hinged if possible, that's always best, but if you break through, no problem, it's okay too. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slather on this blue cheese hot sauce mixture right on the bread. Mm. Great, next we're gonna put our pepper jack cheese, put a piece of cheese on either side like so, and then our chicken. This is rotisserie chicken, chicken breast picked right off the cooked chicken from the store. Doesn't get easier than that. And lastly, we're gonna put a little bit of our hot sauce. Now I use red rooster sauce. I also like Frank's. I also like Louisiana hot sauce. Whatever hot sauce you have in the house works just great. So a little bit of this for some extra spicy on the top. Perfect. Gonna close this up. Sandwich is ready for the grill. All right, here we are. I've got my grill preheated on high. And what I want to do is I'm going to turn it down to low before we put our sandwiches on because we don't have anything here that we want to cook. We just want to toast the bread, heat everything inside, and make the cheese nice and ooey gooey. Okay. Just like this. I'm going to put the oil side down on the grill grate, like so. I've got a big, beautiful spatula. I'm gonna press these sandwiches down so we get beautiful grill lines and everything is nice and compact inside. It's been just a couple minutes, so we're gonna check and see how our sandwiches are coming along. We want them to be nice and toasty. Oh yeah, these look just about perfect. Yes, indeed. So we're ready to flip them. We're gonna do exactly what we did with the other side of the bread. We're gonna take our olive oil. We're gonna give a nice coating on this side of the hoagie roll or the sub roll, depending on what you call it, like so. And again, we're gonna flip this bad boy right over and we're gonna press. Perfect, we're gonna take them off and we're gonna bring them inside. All right, let's cut up these bad boys. Grab my nice wood cutting board. Sandwich is right down on it. Okay, you ready for this? Mmm. What a crunch. Well, here we have it. See, I told you it was easy and delicious, and of course, manly. And don't feel like you have to stick with these sando fillings. You can mix it up. Make a hot roast beef and cheddar a ham and Swiss, or even a veg version if that's more your thing. No matter what you try, this quick and crunchy sandwich is perfect for lunch or dinner, 
company or family, or even to impress your lady friends. I'm RV Cooking Show Van. Give this one a go. You're going to love it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again right here. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this week's program. And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos and stories from current and past shows, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. As usual, this has been another fun production.